So guys, we are now officially at day three. Day three of natural hair in God. And it's very important that we understand the originality of not only should you find the background about who you are, personally speaking, but how your background will essentially reveal everything else about you. And that includes your hair. So many of you are here today and you know very little about your hair. Many of us don't have the lingo to even understand what to do. All we know is that we have hair on our head and some of us like the hair on our head and many of us probably do not. And the reason why we have this group page is specifically because so many of us have walked away from the way our hair naturally grew out from the scalp of our heads. So now we are taking the steps and the measures to undo what we were learning before and choosing better for ourselves. And so this is why this page was created because it is a testament to many of us who have walked away from a lifestyle that should have been, you know, ongoing, but rather we were choosing to look like someone else that is not um, technically having the same hair as we do, okay? So we wanna alter it to look like someone else rather than what our hair would naturally look like. And we are essentially part of this page right now to teach you everything that you need to know about your hair, everything that you um, should love about your hair, everything that you can do to help manage it and give you the results that you're looking for. Is it to grow your hair? Is it for you to um, moisturize it properly? Is it for you to, whatever, whatever your goal is, I, I'm pretty sure we are going to cover that. But one of the most important thing that I felt that was missing in a lot of our natural hair communities is that we're not talking more about who gave the hair to us in the first place. And if we go back to the instructions of how God himself, who gave us this hair, had even, you know, a some principles that work all around um, in our lives that we would be able to rid ourselves from things that are not compatible for us, is not helping our hair to grow, and certainly not good for our health. So guys, so this is day three, and day three is essentially about nurturing and caring for your natural hair with biblical guidance, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be giving you guys some um, biblical principles and guidances to help support why nurturing and caring for your natural hair is a part of stewardship okay stewarding a beautiful gift that you were giving and when you treat it with that kind of love and respect and we're going to do a lot of comparisons as well for you to get a little bit more in-depth understanding um, about the word of god in relation to your hair but we're going to use some examples real life examples that we see in our day to day and see how it connects with our natural hair so i'm excited to have you here guys we're going to spend another 15 to 20 minutes together as we deep dive into our natural hair with relation to god all right so as we're doing that um I want to recap a little bit about yesterday's live. We went over, you know, natural hair type. You know, we spoke about um, um, why, um, like, how to love your hair. And some of you had the privilege of learning um, your hair type with the little information um, that I was able to share with you guys. So. Um, we even talked about the, uh, a passage um, with respect to taking care of your hair. So today we're going to go a little bit more deeper into some more scriptures that is essentially going to support you on your natural hair journey. So here on this, we are 
excited about your hair. Some of you are already managing your hair. Some of you probably are not. I'm not sure where you are on your natural hair journey, but I want you to share something with me. What is one hair care practice you enjoy and you find beneficial for your natural hair? And you can definitely put that in the comment section if you're watching live right now. Um, or if you're doing the replay, definitely share um, with me what um, what you do. What do you do? What is one hair care practice that you have adopted? One of my hair care practices is um using twisting my hair twisting my hair is very fun <laughs> but it is also time consuming which means that i could be here for a very long time sorry guys give me one second Yes, guys, so I'm back. So one of the hair care practices that I enjoy is really twisting my hair while watching one of my favorite movies. And I love doing that because number one, when I am twisting my hair, what I am doing is protecting my hair. For many of you who don't know about protective hairstyles, protective style hairstyles are so awesome because it keeps your hair um, you know well man like maintain you know is not mm. sorry i'm drinking my water as i'm speaking it doesn't feel you know it makes my hair look really pretty very well managed as well but at the same time it is protecting my hair from the environment you know it's not breaking as much all all that good information so for you who you know I don't know what your pattern is, what is one practices that you do routinely, but I'm essentially going to be sharing a lot of my twisting hairstyles that I've done over a number of these years in my hair. And I think that's one of my main staple kind of hairstyle that I do with my hair because I love to, you know, twist it out. And then you have this beautiful crinkle look and it's just really, really outstanding. So twisting my hair while watching a movie helps me to do two things protect my hair while killing time. And that to me is key because managing our hair can take a very, very long time. And if you don't have something to help distract you, um, it can end up, you can end up, you know, uh, <laughs> not doing your hair or not wanting to do your hair. And I don't want to find anything to discourage me, but rather I try to find things that keeps me doing the things um, that is called to, you know, to nurturing my hair. So a perfect example is, um, you know, uh, well, you could give me your example, but another example you can tell me is you like moisturizing or, or um, massaging your scalp. Massaging your scalp, you know, also is a beautiful way to relax yourself. You know, if you have a friend or, you know, a significant other, whichever, like you could have them just put some oil in your hair and massage it. But here's the benefit of that. With the benefit, here's the, here's the benefit of that. I'm talking too fast. Is that you are able to um, promote blood flow into the hair, which helps promote hair growth. So if you guys didn't know, this is one of the main techniques that you would use if you were somebody who's trying to grow your hair. All right. So anyway, put that in the comment section. Just let me know what exactly you do in particular. Now, do we are now going to go into a scripture that I feel is going to support today's topic and today's topic again is nurturing and caring for your natural hair and biblical guidance in 1 corinthians 6 verse 19 to 20 it says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom 
you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And this chapter just tells me that my body is literally not my own. And yesterday I brought up an example about can you tell me how much hair is on your head? Can you actually tell me the exact number of hair on your head? And many of you, if somebody could give me an actual number, I'll be shocked because either I'll ask you, <laughs> are you completely bald where you don't see any hair at all um, on your head and you're telling me zero? That would be the only way that I feel like you would be accurate. Or is it that you actually have one to two hair strands that you can literally count? You know, then I can believe you. But somebody with a full head of hair, no matter how short or long, it's quite difficult to give a specific number. Even somebody who has a beard or a mustache, they can't even number that amount of hair that is on their face. It is something that is almost impossible to, dis to, to distinguish. And yet, in the Bible, the Lord himself says, He knows the number of heads on your head, for he have formed you and I. And so he knows all these details about you that only he can tell you about it. You know? So it's clear that we don't know. We, we don't know ourselves. We are not in control of ourselves. I cannot will myself to even live. I cannot will myself to have more hair or less hair. It's just a matter of stewarding what we were giving in the hopes that it will give you you know the results that you're you know you're looking for so um so this right here do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit which is the truth our hair is part of who god the holy spirit is to dwell in it's not for you to think that you could just do whatever with it okay so our hair essentially is based off of just stewarding what you were giving and I just wanted to show you a picture of our natural hair. We showed this picture yesterday, and some of you were able to point out um, which hair type you fall under. I have the 4C hair range. And I love to look at this because I want to ask a question. What does these, your hair, our hair really look like? Especially hair between 4A to 4C. What do you think it resembles? And if many of you said garden, then you're right. Like shrubs, bushes. For me, that's exactly what it resembles, like a tree, right? And when we think about a tree, there is some nurturing when it comes to gardening, when it comes to how you allow for the tree to grow. It needs water, it needs light, it needs um, food, it needs you know minerals. Everything that is good that we can actually put inside our body, the tree also needs the same kind of nurturing. And that does not exclude our hair as well. So, um, for what we're going to explain is how the tree, the, the roots, the surface, and everything about this tree can be um, beneficial to you and how the tree itself relates to your hair <laughs> at the same time. A question I also have for you is, do we question how the garden was created? Many of us just see a garden, but we don't like say, oh, that wasn't God. God didn't create that. Or where did it come from? We don't really question it. We just know that it exists and we, we, we do accordingly, right? Some of you may already have gardens and you already you probably take care of it. Excuse me, drinking water. You probably already tend to it and you do all that you can water it frequently and all that but you don't really question it you just know that when I do this it, it thrives and it's gonna be the same thing when it comes to our hair we want our hair to thrive now I just told you our hair is like trees and bushes and here's a picture of a couple of bushes that I pulled up myself that I found very similar to our hair you know it is you know these hair right here are just beautiful hair bushes thriving and yet you see these bushes as well looks very similar to our curl patterns and i wanted to read a a book in the in the bible that supports this saying as well 
in Genesis 2 verse 8 to 15 and we're going to read that real quick and here's what it says then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit in the middle of the garden. He placed the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and dividing into four branches. The first branch um, called Pashan flowed around the entire land of Havila and I'm gonna fast forward a little bit then we get then we have in verse 15 the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it that right there I want to stop he placed us in the garden of Eden to tend to it he just knew that we would know exactly what to do and it's the same thing with everything we were given God just know that whatever given into our hands, we're just supposed to tend to it, just like our hair. But many of us don't know what to do or how to do it. But it's good to see the origin of a lot of things because when you understand where it originated, you understand what to do and what not to do with it. So, um, yesterday we talked about understanding your identity, which was 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are chosen people. Oh, we didn't go over that, but I did go over it on day one and you guys didn't, it didn't get saved. But we're going to cut short a little bit because I want to eventually get into um, going into the chat, the live section. But I wanted to talk just a little bit quickly about um, the garden. The garden is such a beautiful place where you see all types of fruits and vegetables, flowers of all types, trees of all types, and that's how we should look at each other when it comes to our hair. We're going to eventually even talk about comparison because a tree does not compare itself to another tree because the fruit that it bears is also different. And we want to stay focused on what God has given onto you and tend to that to the best of our ability. So I hope today you can see how your hair is a priceless gift from God and that it originated from the Bible and we continue to just, you know, care for it and tend to it. And those are the steps that God has given to every one of us. So here is a prayer right here that we have for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of man. I think this verse was just important for me to share with you guys because a lot of things can be painful to do, to take care of. But when we start to choose the right things to do, we start to see good results in respect to that. Um, so this is a verse that wasn't a prayer, <laughs> but here is um, a prayer um, that I have. Father, grant me patience and perseverance on my natural hair. Help me embrace the process knowing that true beauty takes time and dedication. Guys, it does. Taking care of your hair is going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take dedication. And you guys are more than capable to, to do this. You're not alone. This is why we are in a community that is going to be helping one another, lifting each other up with encouraging words with affirmations biblical affirmations and so much more so i'm excited to see what you guys are going to take from this please share with me in the comment section and give me more information about what we learned today what was your biggest takeaway that you learned about your hair and don't forget to read some of the passages that we shared with you because i believe the holy spirit is going to even give you more revelation about your hair as you read these as you start to indulge in, like deep dive into what god is trying to tell each and every one of you there is a love letter it is a love letter to all of you it is a calling a beckoning to come back to the original way to come back to what god already had said about us now these things doesn't have to necessarily say about here but just like your food and everything that we're growing everything that we've used pesticides chemicals you know what we end up doing now we ended up trying to go back to the original way of doing it getting rid of those pesticides and getting rid of those chemicals because we found that these are linked to a lot of diseases and are basically destroying our food um 
genetic makeup and that is never a good thing so i'm excited for you i love y'all i thank you again for being a part of the i am natural hair group page and i can't wait to see you tomorrow on what we're going to talk about for our day four guys until then have a blessed one